If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you've probably seen me review this best soldering station in Volog 340. And this is actually a clone of a JBC station, but I've been using this clone, the best station for the past year or so, and I've been really happy with its performance. But is this station very different from a genuine station in terms of build quality and performance? Well, in this video, I'm going to try to answer that question because thanks to WeElectron.com, I was able to acquire this uh, genuine JBC station for a 50% discount. And if you're in the market for a new soldering station, please check out their website, link below. They have a pretty good offer on these uh, JBC solder soldering stations. So as you can see, these two have fairly similar size and shape. But upon comparing their weight, I discovered the JBC original is 2.5 kilograms, while the best station is 3 kilograms. The uh, soldering handpiece, which is uh, model T245A, is fairly similar for both units, if not identical, but you don't get the soft uh, foam padding for the best. But otherwise, very much the same plastic, the uh, same uh, silicon wire, the almost the same length. However, as you may know, the handle piece that I got with my best station failed at some point soon after I received it and uh, I did an autopsy of this failed uh, handpiece in Volog 387. I have replaced that failed uh, handpiece with a genuine JBC T245A which I got for like 20 euros from eBay as new old stock. So generally speaking, while the two handle pieces are almost identical, you can expect lower quality control on something like the best station and you might be unlucky enough to get a bad handle that will fail at some point like mine did. There is of course a bunch of happy users who didn't have this issue but the bottom line is there is no guarantee on the quality control. I would recommend you watch the video till the end before making a choice between these two but if you'd like to check out some prices on the best station or the JBC station you can find some links in the description below the video. The sponsor of this video Altium is one of the most advanced PCB design softwares on the market. It has some pretty advanced features which enable collaboration among multiple team members so there is no wonder they are a popular choice in the professional PCB design world. If you are interested in trying out Altium, check out the link I've placed in the description below to sign up for a free trial of Altium. In terms of how the main units are built, they have almost identical dimensions and general layout. Plastic is fairly similar, matte black. I can't say I feel any advantage for the more expensive original JBC as far as plastic goes, but the layout of the unit and the ergonomy is slightly better on the JBC because you have a better holder for the soldering tips a nicer holder for the soldering iron which has adjustable angle on the best station this is at a fixed angle you also get a splash protection on the brass sponge area and if we take a closer look at the best station you can see there is plenty of solder splash in this area because of the lack of uh, uh, splash protection in that area and you also get this nice wire holder included with the jbc and this might help organize things on your bench on the back of the unit the JBC once again looks a bit more professional, it shows a bunch of regulatory approvals which you can be sure the best brand doesn't really care about. You get a USB port, presumably for configuration and firmware updating which you don't get on the best station, but you can argue that for a soldering station that's not as important as long as it does the job, very few people would want to upgrade the firmware. There is also an auxiliary port which I think is used to trigger the start of an external fume extraction unit when the soldering iron is in use, which again is a pretty nice feature. Another important difference, the best station comes with a 40mm fan which is noisy and annoying. I had this replaced with a more silent fan in Volog 340 when I did the review and teardown, which makes it okay now. The JBC station does not come with a fan, so that's an important difference between these two and you have to consider that when making a choice. The JBC just has better thermal management, it seems they don't need a fan. When you get the genuine JBC unit, you get a couple of these uh, soft foam pads for the soldering iron included in the box. You get two of these uh, wet sponges, you get the extra wire holder, the uh, brass sponge, a mains IAC cable. And if we look closely at the soldering iron handle, 
we notice it has this plug where the tip inserts to prevent soldering fumes from entering the handle and causing oxidation in the contacts inside the handle. That's a very nice touch and I don't have that on my other uh, original uh, JBC handle. Maybe it's because it was an older revision and they started adding the plug later on. And you certainly don't get that on the best branded uh, soldering iron. In terms of graphical user interface, I think we already know who the winner is going to be. The genuine JBC has a clear advantage here. It's got a better LCD with better viewing angles. It's got a better structured menu system with a decent font. Although the one on the best station is usable, it is not as good as the menu system on the JBC. You get extra buttons on the JBC which you can use to navigate the menu or directly adjust the temperature and you get configurable step sizes which I believe it's a feature that's missing on the best station as well as a bunch of other uh, auxiliary features included on the JBC that might be very useful in a production type environment and it's obvious that JBC have much more experience in that field. Enough with the exterior presentation, let's take a look at how these two stations perform and I can say that I have been using this best station as my main daily driver for the past year and a half. Ever since I got it I've been very happy with its performance but how does it compare to the original genuine unit? Are there any important differences to make up for the cost difference? Well, let's start with a temperature accuracy test and I'm not interested specifically in absolute accuracy because that can be calibrated using the menu system but I'm more interested in seeing if there's any significant temperature overshoot as uh, for example JBC stations are famous for so I'm using the exact same handle and tip for testing both of these stations they are both set for 350 degrees Celsius so let's try to measure the temperature and see if there's any overshoot. Okay, so there was about 18 degrees of overshoot on the best station. Let's switch to the JBC. And now the same test for the JBC, which is also set for 350 degrees Celsius. and very little overshoot yep much better the jbc did a much better job and it seems like its initial accuracy is much better it's just three degrees off next up to measure how fast these soldering stations deliver the power i'm once again going to be using the same tip for testing both of these stations same uh, handle and the plan is to use this uh, piece of copper this is like a bus bar a thick bus bar which has a uh, thermocouple attached at this end uh, with a bit of thermal paste and it's firmly attached with captain tape and at this uh, other end I'm going to be applying heat with the soldering iron tip I'll keep it there for a fixed period of time let's say 60 seconds and we'll uh, watch the temperature uh, measured by the thermocouple at the other end we'll record how high it got after 30 seconds the higher the temperature at this end the better the station puts down the power and both of these stations will once again be set for 350 degrees Celsius. The starting temperature for both of these tests will be roughly 22.5 degrees Celsius. So to sum the results of this test, both stations started at 22.5 degrees Celsius the JBC reached 25.7 in 60 seconds while the best reached 25.3 in 60 seconds and it took the uh, best station an extra 3 or 4 seconds to reach the same temperature as the JBC. I would say these results are pretty inconclusive as such minor differences could result from the test setup, slight variations in the contact point, stuff like that. But the temperature overshoot test was pretty obvious. The JBC did a better job and it had better accuracy with factory calibration. I'm sure many of you are also curious about the differences inside the uh, units 
and I've taken the bust station apart in its uh, separate video so you can take a look at that for a more detailed look it's Volog 340 which I will link on screen right now but just to remind you there were a couple of important cracks in the plastic inside uh, the unit and that could either be a quality control issue or my unit was dropped pretty hard during shipping I would say the JBC was packed very nice uh, with modern paper-based packaging which seemed to protect it very well during shipping I've decided to have them uh, side by side for a better comparison between these two and the first thing that you'll notice is that the transformer inside the JBC unit is physically smaller than the one in the best station like you can see how wide this one is this one has quite a bit less thickness and you'd wonder why there's fairly similar thick copper inside the windings as far as I can see from the outside but this is where that 500 gram weight difference comes from the next thing that I, I noticed is that the JBC station uses a two board construction so it's like one board sitting on the base another board sitting behind the LCD and it, it's strange because I mean it's not strange it's obvious to keep the controller next to the LCD which needs the higher speed interface so we have a DSP 33 driving the uh, JBC station and we have the power and uh, soldering iron interface on this board we can see it uses physically smaller MOSFETs than what we have on the best station build quality in general was not bad on the best station but it's definitely better on the JBC just because of the the way wiring is handled it's very clean and neat looking with these uh, heavy copper flat flex connections all of the mains connections are protected with covers heat shrinked the earth is uh, nicely connected to the motherboard uh, with a screw so overall, even though the best is not bad, the JBC obviously does a better job at this. It, and that's only logical because they need to meet all of those safety regulations. And they're also manufacturing these in a much higher number than uh, best is doing or whoever the OEM is for these. So JBC needs to streamline their production and uh, this is obviously more optimized for manufacturing. Also on the inside you start to see some quality differences in the way the uh, plastic molding is done. Like you can see here some of the marks from the injection molding. It's, it looks much cleaner on the JBC unit. And one thing that I forgot to mention is that the JBC has isolation on the USB port through this analog devices chip. So you can safely have this uh, connected to your computer while it's also powered from uh, mains. Now let's talk prices. At the time of publishing this video, January 2022, the JBC on WeElectron.com is 400 euros, including VAT. That is roughly 452 US dollars, including VAT. The best station on Banggood.com is priced at around 280 US dollars, including VAT, but it's out of stock currently. The advantage of the best station is obviously the lower cost and the fact that you get three tips included with the station while for the JBC you do not get any free tips in the package. You have to purchase those separately. However, the big advantage on the JBC is that you get a good quality product with some warranty support to back it up. It's highly unlikely the original JBC handle will fail you like the best handle failed on my unit. And if you're looking to get a genuine JBC T245 handle for the uh, best station to replace the default one, you're probably looking at roughly an extra $50 spent and some downtime in between. So I guess in the end, even though the JBC has a very slight performance advantage over the best station, the deciding factor when making the choice between these two has to be the higher quality and support for the product. 
if you're a company small medium large company then you probably want your tools working when you need them and probably want to avoid any downtime if and when one of your tools fails you probably want them serviced under warranty now even as a hobbyist if you can afford it and would like a better quality tool just get the genuine JBC don't think about it it will probably serve you well for many years to come on the other hand if you're a hobbyist who can't really afford spending 450 US dollars on a genuine JBC station plus some extra for the soldering tips then you could definitely consider the best soldering station because at the end of the day you're getting similar performance to the genuine unit and three soldering tips included but keep in mind quality wise it's not the same and even if you're getting the best soldering station I would highly recommend getting some genuine JBC soldering iron tips uh, just because the uh, default included ones won't be sufficient for all of the soldering jobs that you will be doing that was all for today uh, i would really appreciate your feedback in the comments below let me know if you have a best or a jabe clone of the jbc or if you have the original jbc at home and how do you feel about that put it all in the comments below if you'd like to support the channel you can do so by smashing that like button or via patreon with as little as one dollar per month Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you next time.